I worked for a number of years in mental hospitals and I came to realize that this was not a way to treat people in distress. They needed something completely different. And I was criticized by my uh, workmates uh, for not doing my job. They said, this Mr. Foss is uh, talking too much with the patients. Hmm. I thought that was a compliment, but it was criticism. Really? I was sitting down with patients and walking around with them and talking with them, taking them seriously. And that was not my job. No? I was to clean the floors and make coffee and, uh, and uh, keep everyone under control. Do you remember the first time you met R.D. Lang? Yeah, I do. Uh, that was in London in uh, 1965. And when I returned in 1975, uh, I, I managed to get him on the phone. And at first he had no time for me, but I, <laughs> I didn't give up. And uh, so he, uh, he finally agreed to meet me at 8 o'clock in the morning for an hour's uh, meeting in his home. What was your impression of him when you first met him? Oh, he was... I mean, I had seen him on film, but uh, he was a much more uh, accommodating, uh, lively, expressive person than I had expected. And I think what uh, broke the ice between us was that I told him that I had uh, read a book he had written about uh, Jean-Paul Sartre and his second main oeuvre, which was called The Critic of Dialectical Reason. Hmm. And he had met no one else who had read it. Hmm. And when I started talking with him about it and showed him that uh, I actually had read it and even to some extent, I suppose, <clears throat> understood. And you read it in English? In English, yeah. But uh, then he became very interested, and then he took me seriously, uh, hmm. you know, because he's, he saw, oh, well, maybe there is something about this strange guy anyway. So let me ask you this. Seven months, you lived in one of R.D. Lang's houses. Which was called Archway Community. I lived there from October of 76 till uh, May of... Uh, 77 till the middle of the filming which I was carrying on at that time and you had a bedroom there uh, yeah, yeah. so all you wake up and had your breakfast with people and stuff like that the, we all shared everything together you just came down and uh, and uh, sometimes uh, everyone uh, made their breakfast themselves sometimes uh, depending on who was in, in the kitchen at the time uh, you struck a conversation with someone you, just ordinary life What struck me after a while was that those people who lived in the houses, which were by ordinary psychiatry labeled as mentally ill, they were not threatened by the other residents of the house, but they sometimes felt very much threatened when they were being visited by mental health professionals. Those who lived in the houses could see immediately if you put on uh, a, uh, a pretense about mm. anything. Mm. If you were trying to impress them with your professional knowledge and understanding, uh, they would just uh, take you down, you know, mm. and, uh, and uh, ask you, well, okay, you, you are a psychologist, okay, you are a psychiatrist, but who are you? But you were filming in those houses. In oh house. yeah, sure, sure. And that didn't threaten people? Because it can be pretty you, threatening uh, to have a camera uh, in your face. No, not when they got to know me. But, uh, you know, at, at first I felt that I was not one of them. Because I could not hide the fact that I was there in order to make a film. Right. But at the same <laughs> time, 
I wanted to make a film about them because I believed in what Lang and they were doing. Right. So that was a kind of dilemma for a long time. And it was only a crisis which happened in the first house I lived in where we had to deal with a very dangerous situation together. And I was there a participant like all the others. And after that, uh, that crisis uh, was over, we were sitting down, everyone, and, uh, and uh, discussing what had happened. And then, without anything tangible having happened at all, I just knew that I w was inside. You asked me what, w what is most significant. I guess it was that after a while, it was completely irrelevant to put a label on anyone for uh, thinking or feeling or acting in a way uh, that would perhaps uh, uh, for a, an untrained eye uh, look pretty crazy. You had to enter into the personal space of people you didn't understand. Hmm. You were a part of their personal space. They never used the term psychosis. When somebody, which we today would call uh, psychotic, had lived out that kind of uh, uh, experience, they said that this person is spaced out. Is spaced out, it means he is now including you in his personal space. Ah. And, uh, and you have to be very aware of that. Like his space is now out. He is, he, it is outside himself. He includes you and everybody else in the household in his personal space. He experiences you. I, I'm simplifying now. I yeah, know yeah that. but it's pretty but, darn but, good. But, but, I'm, I'm into what you're saying. Go on. Yeah, yeah. But, and, uh, so, like, his personal boundaries have extended beyond yeah, yeah, what would and, normally and, be considered so his that, personal what, space. Whatever you did had a personal meaning to him or her because you were within his, uh, his uh, universe of meaning. The consequence of that was that if you did something within his personal space, which he or she uh, could see, because they were very sensitive, could see was false or was somehow uh, you putting up defenses, or you... Uh, Pretend, that, that, pretending that like something, they could see through you at once. I didn't realize it in the beginning that I also came there uh, with my own agenda and with a lot of defenses. Yeah. And they had to uh, break through those defenses and I had to allow them to do that. And that is always, that is always a painful process. Mm. Always. When was the last time you saw your film? <laughs> 30 years ago. It's, uh, it's, uh, I know the Philadelphia Association has a uh, copy of it, and the other copy is uh, in the vaults of the Swedish Film Institute. They uh, finance the film. Do you want to see it again? Yeah. And I shall, uh, it's good that you ask me that, because I must really uh, pull myself up by my bootstraps and uh, get that film. I shouldn't uh, be concerned about whether it is uh, uh, technically as good as I today would have liked it to be. Is that a fear of yours, that it's not good enough? It, it was earlier, but now I'm, now I don't care. Now I don't care. I, I, I know what I did. But Lang supported your film. Yeah. And Why? That was, and that was... That's a very good question. I guess he must have trusted me. For what reason? I mean, it wasn't just That's... that you read all his books. Lots of people... No, 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 no. He saw that I was getting along with uh, the people in Portland Road community. Oh. I was get, getting along very well with them. I have no idea where we're going, by the way. I, I have not looked at the environment. I don't know where we are. <laughs> we shall look at the sun or something. So let me ask you this. Yeah. Uh, would you say you became friends with Lang? In a way, yes, but to the extent that anyone became a friend with him because he was he was 
in his own way, he was he could be very distant, mm. very enig enigmatic, um, except in a therapy situation where he was totally open to you, mm. and uh, that that's what. Uh, People who were in therapy with him told uh, told me that uh, together with Lane, they felt completely, completely safe, and they could say whatever they wanted, no matter how personal it was. And he would just uh, listen to you, and he noticed everything you said. He had such a presence in that context. Is it okay if I ask a really random question? Anything. If R.G. Lang were listening to what you're saying right now, what would you say to him? I would say that, uh, Mr. Lang, you are the most extraordinary person I have met in my whole life. And nobody has, uh, on a personal level, impacted me and transformed me more than you did. That's what I really mean. And how did he transform you? What would you say to him? by actually daring to confront things within myself that I didn't usually want to see and that it was not, it, 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 there was nothing threatening about it. Uh, that I would open up things in myself that I didn't know about. And that was, that's why I call his uh, therapy liberating and not therapy in, in the usual sense. And he wasn't even your therapist, right? Or was he? Pardon? Was he your therapist? No, 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 no. I was not in therapy there. Hmm. Uh, the households were my therapists. Anything else you'd want to say to him? Well, rest in peace, my dear friend. <laughs>